Oops, I don't see. Oh, there we go. Hello, um, welcome to episode 110, I think, or in that, that ballpark. Quark's Insights. Um, we've got a bunch of people here. Uh, gonna talk about Camel, and I'll let them introduce them briefly. Uh, once I've done this kind of important news, let me just turn on my screen here. And I'll hide you all. So, um, we actually have a, a CV that is affecting Quark's dev mode or the dev UI. So, I'll put the link in the show notes and in the details, but basically, uh, this morning we released um, a version of 2.14 and 2.13 to protect against CV. And I'll just make the short version. If you run dev mode, you will want to upgrade to this. Uh, otherwise, you can be exposed to an attack. Um, and if you can't upgrade to 2.14 or 2.13 for whatever reason, uh, there is there is a way you can protect you by setting this property. It's all in the in the log or in the in the blog. Um, but yeah, I just highly recommend everyone to upgrade, and then um, we yeah wish you luck on that. <laughs> um, cool. Anyway, as always, I have to go that one. So uh, I'll let you guys introduce yourself, and to everyone who's listening, you can ask questions. And uh, but otherwise, let's go around the clock here. So, uh, Cnep, you want to present yourself? Hi. Uh, my name is Zineb. I work in the Apache Camel project uh, at Red Hat. And uh, more precisely, uh, I work on uh, developing and maintaining several uh, 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 Camel extensions for Quarkus. So here I am. Awesome. Welcome, Zineb. Peter. I'm in the very same team uh, like Zineb. I'm just porting Camel extensions to Quarkus, uh, Camel components to Quarkus. Excellent. Klaus? Yeah, hi. So I'm also worked for Red Hat uh, on Apache Camel for a very long time. Um, I'm probably adding more box and whatnot for you guys to fix. <laughs> but I self invited me here just to show a little bit of what we're working on lately with uh, Camel JPEG. Awesome. And Holly, I'll let you introduce yourself too. <laughs> so I'm Holly Cummins. I'm one of the developers in the Quarkus team. Works perfect. So anyway, for anyone who's listening, you know, ask questions and we'll we'll put them uh, towards um, uh, yeah the, the team. And I saw Antonio; he posted this thing. That's why you never wanted to dev UI in a prod profile, which is true. And there's a certain gentleman who's been asking me since day one that we should have it in prop profile. So yeah, that's uh, it's good we didn't add that in prop. So anyway, <laughs> all good. But anyway, guys um, and gals, uh, do you want to start off and uh, we can get going? Let's start. Well, do uh, I'll turn. Which screen will you want to turn on, there, Peter? Voila. So um, I will start with a short introduction of uh, Apache Camel, and then I will hand over to Klaus, who will do a short JBank demo. And then, then I will come back with introducing Camel Quarkus specifically, and then uh, Zineb uh, with her Camel Quarkus demo will be there. Uh, Camel is there to solve uh, the, gen the most general and generic integration problems. Uh, you have an integration problem if you have two systems uh, that were not designed to communicate with each other and you need them to exchange some data. And uh, Camel is there uh, for, for these kind of situations and uh, what you need to do in such situations is to, to, to put something in between those two systems. And that kind of thing uh, is, is called camel root in the camel talk. So that root basically consists of two uh, connectors. One of those is uh, reading data from the source system and uh, the other one is pushing the data into the, into the target system. Right. Um, when it comes to connecting third-party systems, uh, 
it's very important to be able to speak those various protocols and file formats uh, which uh, the third party system may support and KMO is uh, this is exactly the area where Camel excels due to the wide community and due to its uh, old tradition. Camel, uh, Klaus, how old is Camel uh, at the moment? Is it uh, 11 or 12 years? I think you're muted. Klaus. Yeah, sorry, I, I was muted. Yeah, it's uh, 15, getting closer to 16. Oh, so... Uh, KMO is, is really old and uh, still still alive and the community is still very lively and the uh, new connectors are coming uh, nearly every day. So the current number is more than 350 and uh, the kinds of systems uh, that you can exchange data with are listed on this slide. This, this is just a short overview. Uh, but this is for you to get an idea how how broad the support for various systems is. <laughs> so I, there's actually I had the same questions as Guy. He is asking, he's like, how much should be using all products, or I'm missing something? That was my question. Is like, where when you said the thing when you have two systems working together, you have an integration problem, which basically means all all IT products. I think. So we, well, do you guys have a guideline for when to use one or the other? Uh, sometimes those systems uh, communicate with a very well-defined protocol or whatever, so they don't need anything in between that makes them communicate. And in such situations, I think KMO wouldn't be needed. But otherwise, if KMO offers connectors for the given systems and uh, if you are ready to write a piece of Java or XML code, then KMO is your tool to do it. And I also guess if, or well, is there a cost to Camel? Like, I assume Camel, like, generalizes all the communication to then do it a bit more abstract way. Whereas, if you want to do more directly, would you st and for performance, extra performance, do you is Camel still the, the thing to go or? What, what? Uh, I would say Camel doesn't add much. Uh, much overhead to the bare bone performance, uh, but maybe Klaus knows some some real world experience. And uh, no, well, Camel has very little overhead, and there's especially we have done a quite a big effort in Camel Tree in particular to profile and fine tune and optimize Camel internally. So there's uh, little overhead. It, of course, there can be in some special use cases where you can say, okay, if in the hands of a hardcore engineer that can write a code that is maybe faster and more direct, but in general, um, you, you, you come as not, not the problem normally. Um, yeah. Would you run it as its own instance or just as a library in your application or? We will speak about that in a, in okay. a few slides. <laughs> And uh, for the for the performance and for how uh, KMO connectors typically work, uh, we normally wrap uh, an existing library that speaks the given protocol or uh, the, the speaks with the given public cloud or whatever, and we just uh, put a standardized API and con uh, configuration on top of it. So that's where the overhead could happen, but as Klaus said, uh, we took care uh, not that not to be the case. And I see from just just because uh, Guy asked the same question here, right? He says, like, <laughs> "I have to step out." Too. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll just continue. That was an awesome set of background noises. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, when it comes to exchanging data between third-party systems, uh, you not only need uh, uh, connectors that speak uh, the given data format or protocol, you also very often need to transform the data so that it's suitable uh, for the target system. 
And generally, it's not only filtering and transforming. There's more of it, like uh, content-based routing and uh, aggregation and so on and so on. And all these kinds of uh, uh, tasks that can be done with the data um, is called Enterprise Integration Patterns. And there was a book written on the topic and Camel could be seen as an implementation of that book. Uh, now let's speak about how those Camel routes can be implemented. So Camel offers uh, several DSLs, domain specific languages. Uh, here, is, here is a small example for Java and XML. Uh, a big advantage of these DSLs is that when you look at it and you never saw Camel before, you may well understand what is this doing, right? If you know that camel roots take data from somewhere and push it to somewhere else, then when you need a from method from AWS S3 uh, bucket name and something, then you may think that this is reading the given bucket and uh, taking the data from there outputting uh, the content on the console and then sending to a Telegram bot. And the very same thing happens in this uh, XML example. And you may well ask, how does Camel know uh, about the secrets and credentials for the, for the source system and for the target system? So uh, this is usually done by... Um, uh, either environment variables or by properties set in application properties on or similar means that are available on the given platform where Camel is, is running. Uh, and finally, let's speak about running Camels. Uh, Camel is basically a library plus uh, the connectors and it can be run standalone because uh, one of Camel libraries offers a main method that is able to, to spin up uh, Camel context. But if you are used to running uh, Camel or used to programming on other platforms such as uh, Quarkus or Spring Boot or Wildfly, you may use those and uh, Camel integrates there very well. Uh, the newest, uh, the newest kit on the block is JBank. And now I'm handing over to Klaus, who is going to tell us more. Thank you, Peter. Uh, let me just uh, start sharing the screen and see if, uh, if everything is OK. Can any of the guys just give me a nod that everything is OK? You can see my screen. Yes, now we can see it. Good. So thank you. Um, so JBank is the latest innovation that we are focusing on. Um, thanks, Max, for creating JBank. It's a fantastic tool. Uh, I encourage users that have not tried it to install it and then also install the Camel CLI. Um, so the motivation for Camel JBank was to make it more easy for Camel uh, to try Camel, but maybe also for users that are maybe not a, a typical engineer, a Java engineer, that can try it a bit easier. Quarkus make it easy to try on the first step on the web page. They does talk about how to install the Quarkus CLI and get going. But also another thing is to try to reduce a bit the learning path to get going with Camel because you, typically we had to be learned about Java, maybe a build tool like Maven, Camel itself, and maybe also the runtime, you know, Quarkus Spring Boot, etc. And all of that you have to kind of know a bit about before you can even try with your first Camel ride. So basically we want to with uh, Camel JBank is to reduce all of that and just you know get going. Also, another thing is that we want to highlight the, another feature of Camel uh, is called Camlets that are a higher level building blocks to make uh, integration easier. And we want to make these as first class for you to try them out and use them in your integrations. And then uh, JBank is uh, just a starting point. It's a tool you can start to use or not, but it's not something you you use in production, et cetera. So the thing is that at a certain point, you can start using JBank, build a prototype, see it immediately, try it out, you know, make mistakes and whatnot, learn some things. And then at a point saying, okay, now this is something we want to use in, in our company. 
now I can uh, export the thing I've been building and to, for example, Camel Quarkus. And then it's a standard Camel Quarkus product, you know, and I can go from there. Um, hey, Klaus, can you hear me? Yes. Can you just make the screen, your, your, your screen maximize the presentation? It's a bit small. Okay. Well, I'm about to go into, um, oh, okay. That's fine. into a CLI mode or into okay. coding. So again, it's, it's a developer tool, not something that's then intended for production. It's totally local, so there's no Kubernetes or anything like that required. You just use your local computer. And if you want to connect to different uh, services, like databases and whatnot, you could, for example, use uh, Docker Desktop or Podman, and you know, with Docker Compose, stand up a Kafka instance, start up a, a database and try it out. Or maybe, you know, access cloud service on Amazon, you know, you have a real credentials and you try it out. So the intention is to not hide all the things, but try it for real. So you as a user have more confidence, okay, this is the way to go. I've seen it kind of working and so on. So it also allows to run um, in in, uh, in these um, developers IDs in the cloud. You know, here's a screenshot from uh, Dev Spaces from Red Hat where JBang is installed and you can actually run uh, Camel JBang as well. So this is very exciting, very lightweight. So now I'll exit the slides and go in a bit about in, in the terminal. So uh, if you have Camel uh, installed, it's a CLI and you, you can start going. Camel init, initize a product, just focus on the file. It can be anything like um, Java, XML, YAML, whatever. Uh, here I just say Camel foo. I can run it. I can also run in dev mode like in Quarkus. Um, uh, and it runs up here in the top. Now I have a shared screen because uh, I can also run uh, a process command to see, okay, how many was running, so I can see my Camel is running here. I can get some more information. You know, this is the latest release is running on JBang. It has been started for 18 seconds and so on. And you can basically just run this in watch modes and see that the metrics going. And then you can essentially go and then do some code changes to it. And so I will actually go up here and restart it because I want to edit the file at the same time. And then I run it again in, uh, sorry, in dev mode, and um, let's also enable a console. Uh, it's not a fancy console as it is in Quarkus, uh, but at least there is something there. So now you can see my editor down here. I'm not using any standard big editor just to show you that it can work with anything. So I can say, for example, here, this is line 14. So I changed it to line 17 and just pay attention up here. Now it says line 17. So we have line code precision on your the exceptions and whatnot in camels so you can better understand where a message was processed and what this if it failed and so on i can of course do updates like um, not so fancy and if i do uh, code mistakes you know you'll get a compiler error and yada 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 like so, that so so, so Klaus, is that oh good go so you, you go you go max right, so i guess that, that's one reason why you don't want in production because i guess you're Absolutely, this is 100% <laughs> a developer-focused tool just for you yeah. to get starting. There's not so, nothing about production. You know, I will, at the end, but, uh, then not show you the way to go to production. That's very um, nice. And is oh, this sorry. CLI that we're watching, is this um, the JBang CLI or is this a generic Camel CLI and the JBang stuff is happening on the side? This is a JBang CLI. Uh, so it's uh, using oh. a JBang underneath, yeah. And well, it has... I, it's, I think what you said, the latter is what's happening. Like Camel is a wrapper, is a CLI that uses JBank behind the scenes to make it easy. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you can also get the routes, how many routes. Has, you know, now this exam, I only have one route. Um, now the processor is, uh, Camel has three layers. The context is the top, then you have routes and then the processors. So you can actually see here sort of like the, the structure of the route is just a timer set body in a lock. And we also made it possible to show the source code line instead of the, the node IDs. So you can see these are the actual source code line on line 12 and 17 down and below. And well, now this one is a very basic route. So you also allows you to say camel top processor. So this is coming back to one of the questions about performance, you know, so it, imagine that you have many routes and whatnot, then this CLIs allows you to easily 
get information at your fingertips about what's going on inside the camel and get metrics and one. So the camel top is sort of like a top command, but for camel, that shows you the the slowest part of camel. So in terms of this is only one route and these are very, you know, the time goes so fast. So the, the stuff, you can't really measure them here, but imagine that you call external systems, do some data transformation, whatnot. They give you sort of quite a quick insight into, okay, where is the, my bottlenecks in this uh, camel application? And this, this stuff you can do without camel jabbing, right? You can still get that information. Yes. In so I am just thing. about to go yeah. on the, this is the fantastic UI. <laughs> Sorry about it, but this is very basic, but it, deals, it gives you sort of like the same thing here. So this top one is giving sort of the same thing. This is so, so sorry for a simple example, but it basically tells you that the, the slow things is apparently the logging <laughs> line 17. And the next slowest is the set body to do this thing. But this one gives you sort of like a quick, whereas something slow in my applications. Cool. Exactly, yes, Max. You can get many different information from this one. Also the memory and generic things, uh, health checks, uh, what dependencies has been downloaded. So when you add new components, whatnot, this one will, will get updated. So we could try to say, okay, let's go to, uh, I just add a component that is printing to system out. It's called the stream component. So if I refresh this one, you can see this one has been downloaded. You know, if it has additional dependencies, you will see them here as well. For example, if you add the Kafka components, you get a whole, whole bunch of dependencies. And I know my time is all dependencies. This is the one I can never type. So camel dependencies gives you sort of like, okay, which camel components are required for whatever I run currently. These are the ones I need. Okay. Well, what if I'm using box instead? What do I need there? Okay, I need these ones. And then let's go and say camel. Now I want to export this one. Uh, Klaus, I have a question. Yes. Uh, how does uh, Camel JBank know which ex uh, which dependencies are needed? So, so that's that's a good question. So I'll um, so it actually it um, so we have a sort of like a locked down version of Camel we can boot up that does not connect to anything. So it sort of like simulates the real thing, but it just captures okay which components are in, and being requested, which language, which uh, data C drivers and whatnot is being requested to be as a dependencies and then you compile that information and store that for you so that's what uh, the camel dependencies is able to do so it's essentially it allows to quickly boot up camel and and capture all that information and shut it down itself in in the background so the source of that information is solely the root definition right you 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 wrote your root in in the java dsl Yes. That is that is referencing some camel components, right? Which yes. map directly to camel libraries, and that's yes. how the tool knows uh, which dependencies are needed to run this specific road. Yes. So what happened is that if it doesn't do any regular expression passing anything in the code, it's actual production. You know, if you ran this in production, you know, camel will request for this component, that component, so on. Normally you'll have everything in your class part, so you don't have any missing bits. So that's the same thing that we run here, but just in a lockdown mode. So we don't start the components. We don't connect to a remote database, etc. But the name of the component like Kafka DMS is still resolved into an actual artifact. And we use the camel uh, catalog for that. There are some components that have a, a trick thing. So they are, one is the, the name, but the artifact has a different name. And then if you ask to expose uh, the runtime with Quarkus, then we map to, to the Camel Quarkus catalog instead, which has you know, the extensions and et cetera. So they have different versions and that's what you see in the bottom on the screen. So, so essentially so what I'm doing here is exporting this one. If you actually saw this, you say reuse existing run data. So this one will actually just reuse what I previously have been running and, and compile the, the source code for that product. So if I go into code and, and do a tree, I actually have a, a, a Quarkus product with Maven and everything. And I can say Maven Quarkus dev, for example. Now I'm actually using the 14.1 release max. So it's, it's you know, but it's there. So now you have it from, from Quarkus. So the idea is that essentially someone can get started with Camel, may not know about Quarkus or not, 
or things like that. Do a little bit of integration, try it out, you know, etc. And then, you know, safely know that I can get to a real deal, the real thing I can export to, to Quarkus. And then I have, you know, the beautiful of Quarkus framework to, to build that for production, etc. and do more coding, in, especially in Java, etc. Um, that, but that's super nice. So, so basically, your like JBanks, like the script you have there, doesn't have any dependency except for just Camel. Yes, it's uh, static, basically. Yeah. Just a uh, very, very quick one. This is what, what the thing is also that we want to use the tool ourselves. So, uh, so there is a special one called Clipboard. Camel Run Clipboard allows to run what you have copied in your clipboard. And what I've done here now, we talked about. Uh, that is so got, cool. Max, I got inspired. Now, Peter, I got inspired by you when you said, you know, how old is Camel? So this is actually from Camel 1.00. This is from 2007, June. This is an example. So this is a route here. So I just copied this thing without the package because uh, it's don't work with package yet. So Camel run clipboard. Now, fingers crossed, this is live, so I'm not sure if it works. So this one is starting. Uh, it actually connects to a database, you know, an XMQ broker. So I've just downloaded XMQ, the latest one, and started being actually controlled. So this one is running in the application. It's not been running. If I go up here, I say camel ps, I can see it. I can get camel get. So of course this is uh, I can get source the source code uh, the source code I have to type the PID because there's a bug uh, so get source it will essentially be the things that I copied from the clipboard but you can see is the is even with the back then there was no GitHub so we were using CSV and these revision things so now I can try it out so the idea is I can go to the ActiveMQ web console it comes with a ugly web console but there's queues, there's the test queues that this route has in started, and I can send to the queues and I can say, hello, 2007 from 2022. So this is 15 years. I can send a message to it. And down here, you can see it, it says received ex exchange. Unfortunately, this example does just output the exchange. It doesn't output the, the message itself, but it was actually running some code yeah. from 2007. Okay, but so just just my brain, I just don't understand. So this is really cool. But what you did there is you took the code, but it was not using the depend. It was using two thousand twenty-two dependencies, right? Yes, it's using yeah. the, the yeah. Two, so what, what this says have... is the Camel's API hasn't changed in two thousand well, since two thousand seven. The basic the... API. Yes. So yeah. this is a strong DNA. So the DSL is very. Yeah. Very similar, at least yeah. to the basic structures with the form yeah. and the tool and the process, yeah. etc. And, and, and the components. And that's the and that's coming back to actually just the question that Gary Gay had. Like he's like, hey, I can do all some of this stuff in Quarkus directly anyway. Why would I use this? Right. And the main the main thing here is that um, if you just want to do like one or two things, it's fine. You want to do a standard protocol, it's okay. But if you are doing, <clears throat> uh, what, what's it called? It's like, uh, um, uh, oh, you're integrating both like a, a CS a comma server file in a FTP or a S3 bucket or uh, communicating that out to a web socket or no, no, a web service or like any combination. Then with Camel, you at least have one you can express in one way that will work in all the different forms and just... It's very powerful to see that the same approach that worked in 2007 works today. Right? So this is basically, if that's the kind of thing that's important for you, Camel, you know, it, yes, exactly. enables things. Right? And it's so. the thing when you learn Camel, you get used to okay, this is the this is Camel routes. Okay, these are enterprise pattern. This is how I, you know, invoke custom Java code. This is um, how I use a component. So I start learning a file component, JMS component, FTP, but it's the same, you know. So when I start to learn, you know, use some of the Amazon components, etc., I I already have past learning. It's very quickly to yes. try it out. And JBank is even quicker to try it out. You don't have to sort of, okay, now I have to start with a Maven project. I go to code Quarkus IO. I have to select dependencies or extensions. Okay, I have to write yeah, some code yeah. to try it out. Here you just bang down some some code in a file, 
Java code, JavaScript, Kotlin, uh, and other languages like XML, YAML. And, and, and for YAML, we also have works with some sort of GUI tools where you can you know, uh, yeah. design it in visual. And then try it out, oh, see all the errors, you know, yeah. just go from there. Yeah. Okay, at least now I have the basic of it. Now I can move on to, yeah. uh, to, to polish it and make it proper. Yeah. Uh, sorry, there well, is I... uh, a lot more to the Camel JBank tools. It's also Camel Doc. So the name of the component gives you the documentation and you have filters there. So if I'm looking some sort of timeout settings in Kafka, Camel Doc Kafka, a filter equals yeah. timeout and it shows you there are so many great things in there. Uh, I didn't even you know show you how can you know you can integrate with hot IO so you can run something you can see camel hot IO and the name or pit and then you have the hot IO web console where you can also see the graphical visual. So there's you know give it a try. Well, you know sorry for for, yeah. the, <laughs> for the excitement. But, That's good. That's awesome. Okay. But uh, yeah uh, what was the next on um, next? Yes, part? if you could please uh, turn on my my screen. Uh, well, if, uh, there we go. I see a camel. So yeah. now let's speak about Apache Camel on Quarkus. Uh, so uh, on Quarkus in general, we work with extensions. Extensions are specific uh, 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 Quarkus specific way of packaging. Uh, certain functionality or certain aspect of functionality that uh, end user developers are supposed to use in their applications. Uh, Camel also has a similar concept that is called components and to make components runnable on Quarkus we need to repackage them as Quarkus extensions and those uh, generally map one to one to each other but they have different uh, Maven coordinates. You just need to be aware of that. And uh, if you go to quark code quarkus.io and type camel, you see the extensions uh, that we um, that we support, but only the ones uh, which have native tests. And for those ones, we know that they work in native mode. Uh, we have some. Uh, that are not tested in native mode, but an extension exists for them. And that one is supposed to work in JVM mode only. Maybe it works in native mode, but we don't know because we don't have a test. And it's maybe up to the community to uh, send a contribution that uh, contains the test and so on. Uh, here I'm showing the uh, extensions reference that is uh, part of the KMO uh, documentation site and uh, here in the list you can see also the extensions that are not supposed uh, not not supported in the native mode and you can identify them by NA in the native sense since uh, column um, when it comes to integration within uh, Quarkus. Uh, we support live reload, which I hope I don't need to explain here what it does. You can live code your camel routes. You can hit uh, control S to save and uh, Quarkus tooling running at the background will uh, find that you have changed the file and will recompile the project and reload the application and you can test it uh, very quickly. Uh, we don't offer our own test services, um, but for our components that uh, depend on Quarkus components, which is generally the case for Kafka, for databases and so on, uh, we reuse the dev, dev services um, uh provided by quarkus so when you have a database or kafka in your camel root and you start the dev mode uh quarkus tooling figures out and starts the dev container for you at the background and you can play with the root and uh, you have uh, a kafka or a database in the container and uh, the root is working uh, the same holds for continuous testing. Uh, that's a generic uh, general feature of Quarkus. Uh, when you run the dev mode for the first time, 
all tests are executed, but when you do changes, only the tests that are impacted by those changes are executed. That was uh, for the integration within KML, uh, of, of KML within Quarkus. And now I'm handing over to Zineb and her KML Quarkus demo. So, so Zineb, just, just before you get started, because I think it's important to highlight that um, Camel is huge, right? The, you, you have, as I said in the beginning, like 300 or something components. And Quarkus, we want, basically, if you could, in a perfect world, we would want all those components just to be available and pushed in Quarkus. Um, but we also want in Quarkus that anything you use in a platform can run natively. So that's why we have this, uh, like, Hey, there are components that you can uh, use in Quarkus, but not in native. But then there's a set of components that you can use in both. And those are the one we promote. But uh, yeah, hopefully over time, this will be, get bigger. But it's not because you shouldn't use those components. It's just, yeah, they may, might not necessarily work in native. But those are you know, improving all the time. So does exactly. That, we are sure? all the time yeah. interested to get contributions from the community. Uh, it's generally the case that we didn't have time to test whether those work on uh, yeah. in the native mode. A, a lot of them will just work, but uh, also is, the thing is a lot of the components that Quark Camel integrate with are, let's call them old systems, old, and they are the most, sure. mo yeah, no, <laughs> that's, they, that means that they all be bump into that they are doing, let's call it exotic, old ways of doing things and that that might not be very good in in a native image or a fast startup scenario so yeah no it'll, it's it's uh, it's really good so cool Zinep, if you want to go ahead so do you hear me <laughs> yes we do um so um because i don't have the slides i will use this this one um just to give you um i will do a demo in the dev mod with those three um, three uh, camel routes. Uh, so the first route, um, I will use it to, to generate the data um, from uh, with the Telegram bot. Um, if, and then we push it to Kafka and then another one that will take that data from Kafka to, um, to store it in a file in the cloud in Amazon S3. And then just in order uh, to get a vision uh, that what we had in the chat uh, uh, is really um, is flowing on those all those uh, resources. Uh, Kafka S3. Uh, we want actually to show these messages in a Google spreadsheet. Um, this is actually to show a little bit of Camel, uh, the concept of uh, consumers and producers, a bit of transformation of data, even if it's going to be. Um, a bit uh, not not that difficult, but uh, yeah, in order to show you a little bit of, of camo. Um, so if you can actually put my screen. Yep. Uh, do you see my screen? Uh, yes, um, we do. Uh, uh, Antonio is asking Amazon S3, why not Azure Storage? <laughs> Hint, for those okay. who don't know, Antonio works for uh, Azure. So, yeah. But see, the beauty of uh, this is you could change from one to the other so easily. Yes, Antonio, we didn't know you are going to be here. If you knew, it would be Azure. <laughs> That's true. Be a thing. Next but, yeah, time, Azure. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but, but, by the way, just one thing, because I think you forgot to say that. Like, why why is Quarkus instant for Camel? Like, uh, and I guess you guys you can tell me, but the, the point here is that Ka Quarkus has the fast that up, it has all the dev features that you talk about. And, you know, those are things that are useful for, for Camel as a Java application too, right? Does that capture it? Uh, I, I, don't, I did not hear the question, what you said. Oh, so my, my question is like, why care about Camel and Quarkus? Why not just Quark, uh, Camel on its own? Yeah, um, well, actually, Peter said, uh, be, because actually we, uh, we have all those capabilities of Apache Camel in this supersonic subatomic uh, Quarkus. So uh, we also um, have a faster boot and uh, 
all the, the things that we have in the Quarkus extensions. So we have lots of things that will happen more in the build time than the runtime. So, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So oh. I created an, this uh, uh, project before in the code.quarkus.io. Uh, while Max were talking about CV, I upgraded to the latest. So I hope everything will, will go right. fine. Very, uh, very so good. Here, so here I have basically uh, Camel Quarkus extensions. I will need Telegram, Kafka, AWS to S3, Google Sheets. Uh, I, I will need Bean and uh, Jackson JSON pad, but you will see uh, together why. Uh, so basically, um, if you go to code.quarkus.io, you can use those extensions uh, very directly. Uh, I started a uh, Java class. Uh, the naming doesn't matter, we can name it whatever we want. Uh, it extends the root builder, which is a, a camel class. And uh, every time actually we have one extension for, uh, for camel quarkus, uh, it will actually uh, have a transitive dependency that is uh, the, camel, uh, the camel core. And uh, it, the, the, the router, camel router will go uh, check uh, if there are some routes. So when we are using the Java DSL instead, instead a, a Java application, we can actually extend root builder. For example, we will have to override uh, the method configure and this is where we are going to uh, create our routes. Uh, so each route will, uh, will be that uh, connector uh, that we saw in the, for the demo and it will be basically an integration between two systems. Uh, so the first one to start is uh, is actually the the Telegram uh, chat. Um, uh, so just uh, to um, it, the the I did not put the QR code, but it's the camel underscore Quarkus in, in case you want to use it. For now, it it doesn't say anything. If I say hello, uh, there is no. Uh, there's no thing. Uh, so I created the bot, but I need to have an application that uses the API with this authorization token in order uh, that the bot will interact with anyone. And uh, just in order to see, uh, this is the, the Amazon S3 bucket that I will use uh, just to show you that there is no file. And this is the Google Sheet at the end. So uh, now uh, let's start with the, the uh, with Telegram bot. Uh, so when I start actually any uh, route, uh, generally we start for from, which means consuming from. Uh, so uh, as you see here, I have my IntelliJ plugin. Uh, if you use uh, Eclipse or VS Code, you, you will have the, the IntelliJ plugin. So if I start actually saying I, I want to use Telegram, uh, it, 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 it says, yeah, I can use, for example, a type that is both here. Uh, it, it, it tells me what are the um, properties that I can use, for example, authorization token. I can use this the authorization token and, 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 and put it here. Uh, but for my application, I, I, I decided uh, that it's here in my application that properties. And here is uh, actually I used here uh, my environment variable. And if you have the um, the the plugin, the same thing. You see here you have camel that component. Then you can have Telegram. Then it it tells you um, it, it gives you what are the properties that you can use. So if you uh, use camel uh, in any sort of uh, runtime uh, in your IDE, it's it's cool to have this uh, this plugin so that you have this ad. You don't have to copy past actually those properties. So. Um, so here I have this authorization token. This is the token that I got from uh, from uh, from Telegram, and this what will uh, make us consume actually those those messages. So if I just use, for example, the log, and I say incoming message uh, from Telegram, and I put dollar body of the message. I should actually start having those messages. Um, 
So here I am going to start the app um, in dev mode. By the way, you don't need to put compile there. Uh, <laughs> I, I think there is a reason why I do this. Um, okay. Maybe it does not refresh automatically all the, the, the routes. Um, so here uh, in comments, so yeah. So there's someone that actually uh, had the start when you, uh, when you um, actually go to the, the chatbot the first time when you click on it on Telegram, you have the, the slash start that is sent and then all the messages that you send uh, come. So oh, I have my hello, he is, is Klaus. Uh, so this is a, in, in, the, in the reality, uh, this is not uh, just a body. Uh, the, the, the consumer actually uh, creates um, uh, a whole project, a whole object from incoming message, which is a uh, Telegram uh, camel component uh, object, and uh, the the body that we see is text. Uh, so for this demo, if you send photos or videos or audio, it does not gonna work. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so if I want to reply uh, with the bot, because as you see, uh, it didn't reply. Uh, I just sent back a message. So here I will say to uh, Telegram bots. At this point, if um, if I let the app reload, if I say hello again, I will get the same um, the same message uh, because I did not transform the body. So here I have the same body. And it knows to whom actually send that message because the consumer created all that context. So there are some headers uh, that are created by Camel under the hood uh, in order to know uh, which user uh, sent this message. So the, the, if we use the producer, then at the end, it will send back to the same, uh, to the same person. Uh, so I, I want actually to, to give... Uh, two kinds of messages, uh, depending if I have the start or not. So here I have a predicate uh, that's go fetch in that message and, uh, and, and, uh, and using JSON path. So having that incoming message as a JSON object and, and see if it's equal to start or if it's a message. And if it's a message, we're gonna send it uh, then to, uh, to Kafka, etc. So here I have, um, so in order to get, so I'm gonna use a choice. So this is one of those uh, enterprise uh, integration patterns. And uh, it's very simple. It says, I have a choice and here we have when. We have many uh, ways of defining when. So here I choosing to have this predicate uh, using JSON path. And then uh, I'm gonna transform those messages. So these are placeholders of messages that I have here. So this is how I use them in the routes. And, and this time when it reloads, if it's the first time I say start, I have uh, the message for start. And if I say, hello world, I have thanks for your message. So I have uh, two message, different messages depending on these conditions. So when you have uh, some different, uh, you have an integration and depending on what is inside your message, or for example, if you receive multiple files, depending on the name of the file, when you have some conditions uh, in your integration, you can use that pattern, for example. Um, so here in the otherwise, before uh, we transform the body of the message, we want to use that body in order to send it to the Kafka topic. And what I want, I don't want all that uh, incoming message. I want to transform it to this uh, type of, uh, of a Java object. So all I want is an ID, a text, just the username so that I don't get, get your last name. And I want to generate a date time. So here I have my object. And I have a Java class 
where I defined one method and that method will take that incoming message uh, that, that is created by the Telegram consumer and will transform it to that Telegram message. So I'm gonna use a bean, which is uh, a way of using Java beans. And in Camel, there are lots of ways of transforming data, but today I'm just uh, showing how we transform it uh, programmatically uh, in Java. Uh, and I will give it the, the, the Java class where there is this method. Because there is just one method, I don't have to continue with the name of the method. But if we have lots of methods, we have to specify which method. And then I want to send this in a, a JSON format. So here I, I, I use the Camo Quarkus um, uh, Jackson. So it will use Jackson in order to transform it to JSON. So I have here um, an error. And then I send it to uh, Kafka. And all I have to do is Kafka. And here, the name of the topic. Let's name it Telegram message. And that's it. So here, I don't have um, Kafka, so it's, it's going to use um, a telegram, um, uh, the, the dev services <laughs> in order to load, and we have seen it somewhere before. Uh, so if we want to see if we are receiving really the messages in Kafka, I can uh, start the second route. And I'm going to use the same name, or it's not going to work. And if I log here and come in, from Kafka in order to see if it got transformed, if it's the right message, and also to see if we uh, really have uh, that condition uh, that it has to be not start in order to, uh, to be sent to a telegram. So here I can put body, you know, if I have any. So, I'm going to start again. So I have thanks for your message. And here I have an incoming from Kafka. And as you see, I have an ID. Uh, I don't know if, if it's clear. I have an ID. Uh, I have my text. I have my username that is Zinet, <laughs> only the, the first name. And I have the, the, the date. And if I do the start, I, uh, I have start, but I don't have the second message that says that it went to Kafka. And in order to consume and produce from Kafka, um, it's very simple. You, you, you can actually, if you don't have very advanced um, criteria, you can just use Kafka and the name of the topic. Uh, in the application that properties, you can add uh, the URL to the broker, if you have some security uh, credential, you can add them, but you don't need actually to do extra things. And if uh, the topic that does, uh, doesn't exist and everything will be handled, uh, you know, automatically. Uh, and um, then uh, we want to send this as a, a file to a Amazon S3. Uh, so, uh, I will need actually to add a header that is uh, used by this produ producer, the AWS uh, S3 uh, Camel uh, producer. And I am just uh, going to S3 header. Uh, so here I need a, a key. Uh, and for the demo, I'm just using random UI. And uh, I can, for example, log uh, that one just to uh, to check it on the on the AWS three. Okay. I'm doing um, so uh, sending message to S three with header. <clears throat> what 
here I can have this one and let's see if the header is okay. Um, and then uh, I will use not to yeah so here I need the, the bucket name and the bucket name is in my environment variable uh, and is here I'm gonna copy it from here uh, so let's see if I did not <laughs> if this going good yeah that's a that's a beautiful every time I see camel I'm like oh it's so easy to try this stuff out. And which it is, but I just yeah. imagine to to do this, you have to have an S3 bucket with the credentials. You have to have a Telegram with the credentials. You have to have. That's actually the biggest issue <laughs> of of using Camel is to have all these. And well, that's not a problem. Camel is just this is the complexity of integration. So yes, um, yes, yeah. yeah, and and this is why I I, I wanted to give this uh, in order to um, to show that when we have lots of things and lots of things in the cloud. We will have actually to um, using Camel uh, will allow us actually to to be flexible and to not have to know all those APIs and and all those. So here I yeah. have one file. For example, if I um, if I download it, uh, is it is it easy to? All right. So if I download it, here is uh, the Hello Tree, and. Um, Actually, if I come back here, uh, I think that was the header. It's the the same name of the file. Uh, so, so here I have other files. Uh, so for right now, I have no consumers. So I, I can have some here. Uh, so now I, I want to have the, the consumer that will send it to Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets, it's live bit more complex as a producer. Uh, so I'm going to inject some data and, and, and I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to use the same one here. Um, I'm going to add a delay or uh, I, I can have, uh, if, if the file is not uh, deleted very quickly, I can have the messages many times. Um, so for the demo, uh, I'm just doing like that. Um, so and and then I want um, to uh, transform uh, back that file to my uh, Java message uh, in order so that it's 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 easier for me. So uh, so I used. Marshall here uh, that JSON. So here I do and Marshall that JSON, but I need to give it the which which type of class, and then um, I think it's uh, produce Google Sheet. Yeah, uh, not this one. Sorry. So demo. Uh, so here I'm using the process. Uh, so process uh, will allow us to uh, manually in, inside a route uh, to take the whole object of the ex exchange that contains the body and the headers and to do um, some, uh, some uh, transformation or some operation in it. So here, uh, in order to uh, to pr produce messages in the Google Sheets, I need to set up some, uh, some headers. And here I, I say that I want to have a row of headers and I want to take those values. And I will take the body uh, that I transformed here because, you know, it's in, in, a, in a route, it's, it's like uh, each step uh, we take the, the, the preceding version of the body. So here I transformed it and here I'm going to retransform it in the, in the process. Uh, but here, I, all I set is headers, so I do not do a set body. So here, I will take only the date, time, the username, and the text, and I will add those to uh, to the existing exchange as headers. And then, at that time, uh, I want to send this to Google Sheets. 
reports. So here I have the produce. So we have actually a limit uh, of a number of uh, of um, of, uh, of requests for the Google API. So here we are using Throttle in order to uh, to to delay uh, to delay that. And here I have my uh, so here it, it's a, it's a bit more advanced to know how these components actually uh, work, but. Uh, I have here all the credentials, by the way, to access the S3, to access Google Sheets, and I have my spreadsheet ID. And in the, um, the README, we have uh, the information of how we set up the, 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 the Google Sheet uh, API um, in order if you want to do this back uh, at home. So right now if i uh, get back it should start consuming if it's not already done uh if i come back here you know here all the files are consumed so they disappeared and here uh here's are some uh, messages um and even if i upload one similar file here for example here it's a my example, uh, if I close, it's already been consumed. And this, this is my file uh, that I created this morning uh, with Anonymous. Uh, so it, it works also if we do not go from that telegram from the beginning. Um, so this is basically the, the demo. I don't know if I have, uh, so I, I, I just want to, to show something um, so th these routes, uh, th this way of doing is uh, it's the Java GSL, um, and and we can use uh, basically the same keywords for for lots of kind of DSLs. Where we are in Java, we can also uh, use the the endpoint GSL, and uh, we we should extend for another class, for example endpoint root builder. And if I, I will go for, for this one, just to show what is the difference uh, between the endpoint DSL and the, the normal DSL is, for example, uh, I will have the from, and here I can do the AWS3 so that I don't have to type it, for example. And uh, here it uh, it says give me the the path, so I'm gonna do the same thing here, um, or I can do the name, and then I can for the delay I will have it here as as a method. So so, so this is a, another flavor of how to use uh, to use the, the the Java routes, for example, using that endpoint DSL, just in order uh, for you to know that it exists. Um, so, and that's it for, for my demo. <laughs> I don't know if there is a, any question. Awesome. Well, I don't think I, I've I, ever I seen so many moving parts in a <laughs> demo. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, actually, one thing I have, because... Um, oh. There you go. Uh, one thing I have, where's my, ah. nope, there you go. Um, well, how do you do optimizations? Because you have a lot of um, dynamic uh, things in here. Is that somehow optimized? Uh. What do, what do you mean by optimized? Um, well, well, for for now, this demo I did everything in one application. So basically, we generally we will have uh, each connector by by each side. But what do you mean by optimization? Uh, meaning in the well, there's a lot of strings that does interpolation, does uh, AWS two S three. Any of this uh, can't be done at. Uh... At one time, right? With a build time, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Max, this is actually done at build time. So yeah. the routes that uh, Synapse has coded is processed once at build time. So to 
to the routes are, you know, so what Camel is bootstrapping itself, the configure method and the route builder is sort of like a plan for the routes. So this code there is execute once to set up the routes and then Camel builds an internal runtime route that I actually executed. So all these component names, S3, Kafka, et cetera, these are component names for extensions that Camel then uh, uses. So essentially what Count, uh, Sun, Sun F has done with, with the Java DSL, and if you use XML or YAML or, or JavaScript or whatever DSL you use, it all becomes the same runtime processing model inside Camel itself. It's just Java code inside, so that's the same performance, etc. Um, okay. Yeah. So here, if we see the startups uh, of the, the Quarkus app, you see that you have the um, or starting the routes, you know, like you have the route one, two, three, and camel, and then at the end we said that the 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 app is started, and uh, in camel Quarkus, and this is just the dev mode and JVM. It's already very fast that all those are are started very quickly. Um, there is another way sometimes. Uh, so when we we write consumers like that, they are they are they are uh, already started. Uh, when we use, for example, the producer or the consumer templates, um, for example, in, 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 uh, inside uh, uh, REST uh, endpoints, uh, at, at that time, the, those, those consumer, those producer can be actually started in, in, in runtime. Uh, for example, you can use REST easy and inside of REST easy, uh, uh, say, uh, yeah, I'm using the, um, you inject, for example, the producer template. And at that time, when you inject it, it's it, at this time that uh, that if you have some misconfiguration, you will see it at, at, at runtime. Uh, but when we, you you do this way of defining routes, uh, if you have some some errors of those routes, the, the app will not start because they are pre uh, pre-compiled and... Yes, cool. and also if you use the tooling plugins that Synapse installs, you know you can see those small camel logos in in, in the gutter over there, and and the tooling will also give you code assistance on all these endpoints in Camel, which are basically strings. Uh, for example, the from a S3 delay equals one thousand five hundred, but Synapse showed the other way where you can use the type safe endpoint DSL where everything is uh, fluent methods from Java, so you know it's is type safe in compiling. But uh, the string way of, of endpoints in Camel that has been uh, been there since Camel 1.0, and this is a very common practice. And with the tooling, is is quite powerful to give you the options you can use so you don't make typos, etc. But also the dev mode in Quarkus is also fantastic. So if Synap makes a, an, a mistake in the delay types, a mistake there, you know, Quarkus will then come with a compile error and you can see it immediately and fix it. So, yeah, yeah. So that's really fantastic. Yeah. Um, one thing to note is that, you know, you can also mix and match all these DSLs. So some users will, you know, have XML, for example. And now when I say XML, this is actually, you know, of course, a bit out of fashion today, but uh, it's uh, quite uh, heavily used in older version of Camel. So if you're coming from a Camel 2 world or something like that and you migrate into Camel 3 and then choosing to use the Quarkus editor, then, you know, you can still use XML and then some people can use Java code and you can have everything uh, in the same application. Oh, and speaking of that, you know, we are just started on, on Camel 4 because we need to to migrate to Java E10 and Quarkus 3 and et cetera like that. So that's coming uh, in next year. Next year or sooner? <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, you know, since we talked about Quarkus three, yeah. So the the for those who don't know that we do in Quarkus three, which is one of the big part in there is the music Jakarta, and you can imagine Camel has a lot of dependencies of different things. So they um, they have a equally fun exercise of of moving. Um, but yeah, the whole idea is to that will come in hopefully soon in alpha. But yeah, final will be sometime in in the new year. Um, we got a question from uh, Kenneth, who's saying, uh, "Does Camel support WhatsApp Cloud API sending and receiving?" Is that a 
Do you know? There is a new ape component for that in 219, I think. So. Oh, okay. But Good. sometimes these um, online service has a huge API and the camel components may not support everything. And some of them are sort of like auto-generated based on, on the API so they can actually be very huge in camel itself. So sometimes you can lose the say, oversight yeah. how, how to try it quickly. Um, sure. So, so yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, but we're actually running out of time. Um, so Peter asked me in the beginning, is it okay if you're in early? Perfect if you do that. But uh, um, great to see you guys have uh, you had a lot of content. So basically... Really awesome demos. Yeah, a lot of, lot of demos, yeah. You came with a... <laughs> that was good. Oh, I'm getting dark here. Yeah, sorry, I moved to Denmark. There's no light in here. Um, <laughs> so... Yes, it's 4 p.m. I'm, I'm, and it's getting dark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I have to be in a different room, so I don't have my nice lights. Anyway, so, uh, you know, super thanks for, for the demo. And, yeah, we have to cut off because I'm, I'm late for my other meeting. But uh, great. And try out Camel, Camel J-Bang, Camel Quarkers, and, uh, yeah, all good stuff. So enjoy and see you online.